How was dinner? It was pretty good. I had this, uh, it's like spicy bean chicken salad. It's like some fucking healthy choice frozen meal, but it's like really good. It's like one of my favorites. I, I like have that shit when I just can't be asked to like order something or like make something. <laughs> Which is most nights. So yeah, you can see how that goes. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the bonus stream. Welcome to the bonus stream for the, or a bonus stream. Ah, yes, father figures. You love to see them. Well, I'm sure you guys do. I wouldn't know. Thanks for the sub, Damies. Appreciate it. I just read the game title. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. You guys know it's coming. You guys know it's coming, don't you? So, for those of you acquainted with the lore of me in my existence, I just kind of popped into a, like, reality one day. Just spawned. In it? Like, I just started existing. No parents. No bloodline. Just was there one second. And, was in like, wasn't there one second. Was there the next. And I hear all this talk about parents and father figures. And I didn't really have a frame of reference. But hearing about it, it sounds pretty nice. I kind of want one. I kind of want a father. A, a dad, you call it? A daddy, even? Jeez. And... and you know, apparently there's a game that is like a great matchmaker for that kind of thing. It's called Dream Daddy. I've, I've heard it in passing for a long ass time. It's like a dad dating sim, but... I really I really wanna... I really wanna... I've been meaning to play it for ages, like since I first heard about it. Because I think like the game grumps are in it or some shit. Thanks for the sub, Bumblebee of the Sea. Appreciate... Holy fuck! Dude, those viewers are crazy! Holy fuck! Damn, I did not expect to see so many people. What's up guys? Welcome, welcome. We're in for a gamer of a stream. Also, while I have you guys here, uh, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of people in here. Oh fuck, hype train. Uh, how often should I be wooling like wool or washing wool sweaters, like cable knit stuff? Because like I got one recently, and you know it's not dirty yet, but I want to like know how I should be maintenancing it. Google has been kind of like finicky on the advice. Any any suggestions? Yeah, thank you for the hype train. A bunch. You should shower daily. No shit. Uh, I don't know. Ask the woman in here. <laughs> Depends how much you wear it. I wear it pretty often. But it's like the only one I have, so I don't know if it'll change. Yeah, I have a, not, definitely not washing machine. But like, I know you're like meant to hand wash it and shit. Unless it smells like shit, I would say it's fine. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Because, you know, wool's like antibacterial by nature, so like, it... Gets turned on it less easily than other things. <laughs> no, quite. This isn't how you get adopted. Wrong game, wrong game. Nope, I know what I'm getting into. Pat stains and wash every few months. Got it. Thanks, guys. You, I, I can always turn to you when I have uh, adulthood-related needs because I can barely take care of myself. What did you guys think of my stolen tweet today? Did you guys enjoy it? It's, a. Uh, I completely forgot I had stolen that one. I'm gonna be honest. It had been sitting in my drafts for so long, I forgot when I put it in. Not enough Tito's in the world for this. Jeez. Uh, you guys are so mean. We're doing Dream Daddy? Sure are. In a few minutes here. Wanna make sure that notice go out for everybody before we get started. It was 10 out of 10 original. I do have some originals in the in the pipeline. Like, let me go over my recent tweets and see which ones of them weren't stolen. So the Shed's Human Flesh, that wasn't stolen. The Good Stretch that makes you groan erotically was literally after I had just done that, so that was, like, lived experience. Fresno was volunteered to me. A friend of mine told me to put that. Like, he wanted me to tweet that in his stead. Fucking dudes and getting stoned like I'm out the Old Testament. That was a bar from my song. So, like, that, I, I did come up with that one. Show us later. You can have two dads. I have a dad and a daddy fucking Christ. I, I say this a lot. My kids are not going to be calling me dad. They're going to be calling me quite. They're going to address me by my first name by choice. Say the fucking dad's eye while like fucking kill my ass. Not doing that shit. 
Every day I wake up a little gayer than I went to bed. Bruh. You saying no. I spit. Bars. Parental figure quiet. That's a fucking scary ass sentence. I don't think anybody wants to hear that. No dad, no dick, no balls. Anybody want to play Pest one more time before we get into it? We got a big crowd today. I feel like I should plug my my shit. Guys, here here's my here's my debut single. Pest by Quite available on all streaming services. Thank you for the sub mushroom, I appreciate it. Holy fuck, I'm beating this thing into the ground and I do not regret it. Ligma? You can do better than that, alright? Alright, pest, and then we'll get into the game. Call me King Kong, I got a fist in every orifice. Need a bitch to step on me like I'm playing Origins. Eating too fight. much, I got a shit while recording this. I don't smoke weed, just spices, and it sorta hits. Saving my virginity won't catch me in a horror bitch. I'ma stay chest, last to smash like Sora is. Pocket pussy got my penis redder than Corbin. His tip inside my mouth, suck the dick like I'm snorkeling. He blowing out my back, it's getting cracked like some porcelain. Even gay sex is still heteronormative. If I take a block or a video, then dip like an Enderman. Say quite stole that title, like no shit, of course he did. Yeah, my drink purple. Not lean, no, it's G Fuel. Biggest call me slurs that there's a nice ring to. I give advice that fucks up your life like Bing do. Try to eat a rock and now I got me a chip tooth. Stacking up the mid rolls, I'm forcing you to sit through. I'm the last choice to post up with like bitch you. We just lost 100 viewers. Whoops. Die. That's a big mood. We don't have a future. That's the reason you that guys just don't appreciate mood. great art. Sound like low five beats. <laughs> like I'll be in your scalp on your head like some shampoo. A few old friends more two faced than Rambo. If you got a picker avatar, I can't stand you. This is Ugh. very gay, yeah. I honestly, most, most things of I do everything are, I said is all bullshit. Unfortunately, I'm begging, nothing like, literally on my knees all doughy hide. Please don't take this that serious. I mean, I'm feeling delirious. Can't control myself, got hit with the imperious. Don't touch your balls at least the first time you're hearing this. One of my Twitch chatters killed a cat and then buried it. Banging on the same mattress that I keep my money in. A Mr. Krabs mogul don't give my employees benefits. All my podcasts have ended like most marriages. I fuck dudes and get stoned, I'm out the Old Testament. Stacking money on the top like a Sega Genesis. I've been getting fucked up worse than eugenics is. I talk shit more than a 4chan degenerate. Like Hard to cancel me like a Planet Fitness membership. I think my channel's dead and I think that they're all pessimists. The careers lasted longer than those fuck-ass confederates. Masked up and big-headed, same as Darth Tenebris. My dick funky looking, shaped kinda like a pencil is. A lot of folks on TikTok who kinnin' with Oedipus. I tweet a lot of dumb shit. Thank just you for the hype train, guys. Appreciate Enough it. Enough good people around me, so I'm not afraid of severance. I burst the line to end it all. Call the hoodie pestilence. Yeah, the cat killer made his way into my lead single. Like, I don't, I don't know how to... I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that five years in the line, but it happened. Glad you actually enjoy it, though, guys, and aren't just like listening to it because it's your favorite youtuber made a song time to listen to it by obligation i'm glad you guys like it but uh if if i'm already back in the stew if you will so already working on new stuff the grind never ends or whatever the fuck all right let's jump into the video game part of this dream daddy a dad dating simulator graphics quality daddiest oh that's fucking nice Game Grumps, the game. So shout out these guys for making their game windowed by default. I'm gonna bust a fucking nut while playing this game, aren't I? Also, how's the audio balancing? Oh yeah, it's really loud. I'm gonna put it down here. That, you know, that intro's a bit on the nose, you know? This is not the correct dad game? I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, trust me. Dad rector? More like dad rection. Jeez. Alright, let's, let's just jump in. I'm going in blind. Dad. Dad, wake up. Wake up. Pretend to be dead? Five more minutes? You said that five minutes ago. And also ten minutes ago. Uh. I finally opened my eyes and sat up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Uh. Yikes, Dad, breathe. Go brush your teeth. 
A child? Yes, I'm a father of this game. Which is a terrible thing to imagine in real life. Bill's your dad? Hmm. Me. <laughs> uh, that's too skinny. Slim bond- slim tank bod. Slim binder bod. Thick tank bod. I'm definitely athletic, I think. I'm huge. I'm big as fuck. What the fuck, twink? Come on, come on, guys. Just, I'm, I'm huge. Guys, I'm huge. He looked gross? Well, yeah. He's, like, barely a person right now. Alright, let, let's start with the head. I definitely got this jawline. That's definitely me. Egg. That, this is a nice compromise between... This looks like Charles Xavier, jeez. Make him like your boyfriend? I don't... You can't exactly add bunny ears from what I understand. Uh, is there anything in this that looks like a hoodie? Slick back? What are you guys feeling? What are you guys feeling? Mr. Clean looking at- You're so mean to me! You guys are fucking assholes. Twinkie material. Goku hair? Wait, where was the Goku hair? Oh shit! Yo, oh yeah, that's- that, that's gotta be the one, don't it? That's gotta be the one. I feel like the shape of Goku's hair would be trademarked, wouldn't it? Alright, I'll, ju I'll just go for the fucking- This is like the safest haircut to have in this day and age. I like this a lot. The fucking, like, the amount of variety you got. Green? Yeah, you're right. It has to be green, don't it? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to look tired as hell. There you go. Alright, green hair. Because, you know, I got green hair. Green eyes, because, you know, I'm also green. Oh, it looks like Doofenshmirtz now. Huggers. That's not right. That's not right. Gap tooth mouth. <laughs> I could slide a credit card through that. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep it subtle because I'm a really subtle guy, you know. I like the softer ones. I don't know. I'm gonna go with those. Facial hair. I'm, you know, I'm gonna run it- I'm gonna run it blank on this one. Nah, no glasses. There's no sunglasses, so there's no point. What did you walk into? Uh, I'm trying to find a father figure. No piercing. Okay, guys, I just can't do the twink bot. It don't look right. It, it's- it's hard to look at for me. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm gonna- I'm gonna have to take some creative license with my look in this game. Looking good, daddy. Um, quite? No, no, capital K. Quote. We, uh, wear that name proud, proudly. Be that dad. You need clothes? I, I imagine you put on clothes later. Ah. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. Mm. What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. <laughs> Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. Huh. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. The, the only way your father and I, the only way your mother, I'm gonna say father. The only way your father and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. Whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. I skipped clothes? Is there a way to go back? I gotta- I gotta load it. I gotta load it. I gotta add my clothes back. Unfortunate. Dad. Okay, we'll get this right this time. We'll get this right this time. Build that dad. Okay, so I think I remember pretty much everything we did. Fucking, uh... Rest in peace, Etika. Green. Eyes. I'm gonna go for different eyes this time, I think. I kind of fuck with these ones. I don't know, I just like them. Which one did I have? I forgot which nose I had. I'm just gonna go with that one. Easy. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Clothing. 
Burger. Okay, that's pretty fire. Yolks on the nipples. I like that shirt a lot. Maybe Bay. I'm not a big fan of the, like, the pocket square. I don't know. Definitely not the suit. That's too much. The suits are too much for me. I'm going to keep it casual. Plain white tee. Burger. 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 Okay. We got it right this time. We got it right this time. Give me a second. I got to fucking turn down the temperature. It's hot as balls in this one. You know, despite being in the middle of the goddamn winter. The weather didn't get the goddamn memo. Okay, okay. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done. Okay, okay. Uh, Father. The only way your father and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. I feel like that permanently damaged your vision. Halloween when you were maybe four? Oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide being a princess or a dragon, so we went with both. That's really cute, god. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. I fuck, I fuck with it. An anti-vor advocate. That's what, that's the daughter I raised. Anti-vor. Right? Yep. Definitely repressed that memory. And this was you and your horse phase. Dad. I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. I don't think that was his. Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold her, head, her, hold her head with my superior dad arms. Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. Okay, I would never do that shit. That's just not true. Ouch, kid. The Communist Manifesto has a, had a chance back in the day. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. <laughs> She's got P in her name. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Ugh. Dad, Emma R has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it, like, a little bit of effort. All right, Emma P was the one who tried to steal people's fats. Fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station? What kind of company is my daughter keeping? Pooped her pants <laughs> during a sleepover. Dad. <laughs> Dad, that was me. I did that. Oh. Oh. And I was having a sleepover with Emma R, who isn't Emma P? Why am I such a terrible father? She never told anyone, though. True blue, that Emma R. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get, she'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. Yeah, and it got us the $20 gift card to McFridays. And then you got food poisoning. <laughs> Everybody's just shitting through this, huh? I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z. <sighs> Dead. Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. Mm. Neither of us say a word. Damn. We stare at the photo for a long moment. Mm. I finally decide to break the silence. This is the day you were born? Eh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say adopted probably. It's kind of a funny story. The day we brought you home, we got into a car accident. It wasn't anything big, just a little fender bender in the parking lot. But of course, I was freaking out, and the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. It was your fault. If we hadn't adopted you, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> but your father, oh man, he holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes. The calmest I've ever seen him. He says, "It's okay. It's all gonna be okay." He was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss him. I can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. What is this game? It's Dream Daddy. It's a dad dating simulator. You're right. Amanda and I pile into the car to take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your father and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. 
Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Hey, remember when I shattered the other pr front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? I don't know, you're like... If it smells like a robot that smashes windows, looks like a robot that smashes windows, and smashes windows. I'm a... I'm gonna say it's a robot that smashes windows. You were a very imaginative child. Yeah. Hey, remember when I broke the win the back window? We get it, Amanda, you break yeah. stuff. And there will be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away, and I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear into the rearview mirror. So... So what? So sell me on her cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... A two-car garage. That's right, you heard me. A garage big enough for not one, but two whole cars. As well as room for all of my very important dad tools. Apparently I would work, that's good to know. And my motorcycle. I cannot drive one of those. My sick hog. Hmm. The old steel pony. Dad's little motor velocipede. Dad. The two-wheel transportation station. <laughs> I have never ridden a motor motorcycle in my life, and to be honest, I am afraid of them. Now that's more like me. Anyway, it, it's also smaller than our last house. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. Right. I think it's great. Won't be won't we be closer with a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to, so I don't have to waste gas. And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're gonna have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? I haven't yet. I've been fine. Just don't parallel park ever. <laughs> Not gonna happen. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. Huh. Fuck. Holy fuck. I will one day write the coffee shop quite ex Trap fanfic. If you do, if you write that fanfic, that's a fanfic I'll read on stream. If if that if that gets made, and you put that in fan submissions, that that that'll that'll that's like one of the only fan fictions I think I could like approve of myself reading on stream. <laughs> if it's not like top like if it's not like in the top uh like tier of AO3 fanfics I've read though, like I'm gonna be very pissed. Okay, I only deserve like auteur writing. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. So you don't have to chase rainy rowdy teens off your lawn? You were the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Hmm. Me when I kick my child out of the house. I'm in my last year of high school and practically dust. No smut though, no smut, okay? No, like it's got it's gotta be it's gotta be like all ages, you know? Yeah, you're a real don't you dare? Senior? Hmm. Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. Huh. I'm just gonna ignore that. Oh. But I won't forget it. So what's at item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to go grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me we're gonna take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check the area out. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale sign is still in the yard. I like this place. It's nice and quaint. If it was like me and one other person, this would be like an easy place to live in. Hiya. And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pig. I got a problem with authority, clearly. I'm so proud. Oh. Thanks for this uh, 150 bits, Kenna. Man, all the karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. That's not healthy. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. We need to unpack first. I need some coffee ASAP. Did you even see all the dogs in the park nearby? Mmm. Am I gonna be... Get, get her, the get shit done dead? The don't talk to me until I've had my coffee dead? Or the unabashedly gay dead? <laughs> Hmm. I'm thinking... I'm gonna see the dogs. I'm gonna see the dogs. You know it. Thank you for moving us to an area where the dog-to-person ratio is very high. 
I only want what's best for you. I hope you're paired for the frequency at which I interrupt conversations to yell dog to rock it way up. I mean, you do that a lot already. Hey, it's a dog. Wait, false alarm. It was just a funny shaped rock. Okay, you little prick. If you want to see real dogs so bad, let's go to the park around the corner. This game, this game's getting a little too wholesome for me. It's a bit too domestic for a quiet stream, man. We usually play some fucked up shit. This, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you now. This is such a nice change of pace from the fears to fathom streams, man. My heart is not pounding out of my chest. It's, it, this is like really good for my blood pressure. I'll tell you that. Amanda and I began a stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. This is a kind of city I'd like to live in. It's like walkable, breathable, power lines above the like the ground. Kids are playing in the street. The flowers are in bloom and the faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts throughout the air. This place is nice. Too nice. I expect the murder around the corner. You see that alleyway with the fan in the background? There's a dead body in there. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in that stroller over there? Government operative. Also bald. Loser. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. Ah. We walk for- I, I just noticed I really like her jacket. It's nice. We walk for a while and eventually end up in a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's a pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Uh, I punt a toddler on reflex. That's like a bonding activity for me and my child. Heads up. Whoa. Ow. A frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof. <laughs> a corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around his neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. Did you throw this thing at my head? Arf. He run you guys didn't expect me to voice out like the full bark, did you? He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nuts. N nuts. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. But where do I pet the dog? Give him those head rubs? I'm not doing butt pats, dude. That's that, that's like too strong of a first impression, I think. I give him some little scratches under his chin. Oh, his tail is wagging at top speed. You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Well, you're traditionally not supposed to aim for people's heads. It's like disc golf, but the goal is my face. Looks like you're winning. Ha! <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. Damn, big guy. Big guy. Ginger body hair. You don't see that often. Typically only on gingers. I'm quite, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I look over at Amanda, only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. Hi. Your dog's cool. Ah, uh, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see father and daughter out here on a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. This is Daisy. She's reading the Brothers Kar Karamazov. Kar Brothers Karamazov? I don't speak Russian. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? Hey. Ten. She's a precocious little youngster. Ah. Whoa. <laughs> my natural dad instincts kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Fuck! <laughs> there's nothing! There's nothing! <laughs> oh no. It's happening. <laughs> Brian, go on, Daisy. Tell him about yourself. Um, I... That's my girl. Amanda, get in there. Amanda, okay, okay. <laughs> Is this layout not, like, protected under, like, trademark law? I, I won't question it, it's great. Quite's HP 80, Brian's HP 80. Brag? Item? Grade card? Band-aid? Child art? Spelling bee photo? Definitely child art. You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Brian. Cute! It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Ryan loses 10 HP. You regain 20. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president too, of course. Dang, my high school doesn't have a chess club or a computer lab. Yeah, so we we're, so we're broke, is what you're saying. We go to a we go to a poor person school. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You lose 10 HP. Quite's HP. 90. Okay, we're we're, we're still in the clear right now. Can't switch daughters? Amanda is your only daughter? Spelling bee photo? Grade card? 
I don't think the grade card would end for me. End well for me. I, I do like the setup of this, because uh, it implies that I'm about to, like, just fucking sock this dude's, like, daughter in the face. She's about to cast these hands like Nganu gave gun, you know? Like, sheesh! How do I go back? How do I go back? I want to go back to the, uh... I want to go brag. Band-Aid for now. With a flourish, you produce a band-aid from your pocket, take a knee, and start to apply it to Amanda's arm. Amanda- oh, <laughs> What are you doing, Dan? Being a protective parent, anyone would agree it is an unusual gesture. You lose 10 HP, fuck! Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize. A can- a canoe! Daisy, we're taking it out next weekend. How is this even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. 60, 70. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Wow, congratulations. Ryan loses 10 HP. Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. Oh, fuck, we got dunked on. You lose 15 HP. 45, 60. Fuck. Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Ryan loses 20 HP. Did I mention Daisy in her first word at 10 months? Daddy? Amanda's was potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. <laughs> Thanks for the sub, Jeffies. Hey, Nux, I'm currently trying to find myself a... a big strong man to woo, if you would. You lose 10 HP. F fuck, this is not going well. This is going really bad. Uh, Amanda's in all honors classes this semester. Ryan loses 10. Oh, really? I'm actually talking to Daisy's teachers about having her skip a grade! Fuck! Dude, we are so screwed! This daughter is leagues ahead of mine in every way, and she's like half the age. We are screwed. Even Amanda kind of bristles at that one. You lose 20 HP. How do I heal? What do I use to heal? Gay dads? Yeah. You're so bad at fucking Pokemon? Well, yeah, I'm not exactly trying to have sex with him. I'm trying to battle him. Weirdos. Fumbling through your phone's browser, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully, this will be her third win in a row. Oh! Daisy here has all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity, either. Amanda self-consciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth. It's extra power. Fuck, I'm dead. I'm dead. Dang, he's really got us beat. Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. <gasps> Did he have to add insult to injury by being such a gracious winner? So I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood? We just moved in. Do you live around here? Oh. Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down next to the shoffy shop. What a coincidence. That's where we live too. Small world. Yeah, Daisy and I are in that little ranch style house in the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? Can't catch a break in these streets, man. What a lovely place. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye! Ryan and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Hmm. Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at a rage? Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. <laughs> Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not too late to minor in horse creative writing. Too close to the truth, Dad. Aww. Let's never speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave and Epic at Seven Parts by Amanda Quote. Her last name's Quote. Incredible. <laughs> We laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. Mm, let's hit let's hit the let's hit the coffee shop. I gotta get my hands on a nice old cup of not nice hot cup of the old bean juice, or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we passed the coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we can check that out. Let's do it. Ah. Now this is where I meet Springtrap, right? We walk down the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Yeah. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? 
at least when I'm home. Some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the, the recliner next to me, and I won't feel, like, a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he is very much within my personal zone. Huh? Dad. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it on the counter before you don't because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere, just out of sight, and now you're the jerk who left their mug? Aww. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. We walk inside. Hey. <gasps> oh no, he's hot. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls in Patron's Lounge on well-worn couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Hey. Welcome to the Coffee Spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Hey. Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of dumb. Oh. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time. And I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running? Mm. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. Fuck, he's so charismatic! Holy shit! Hey. Guys, I think this might be the one. Guys, someone's- is someone saying Creeper because- oh man. Matt with one T? Jeez. We gotta, dude, we hit it. We hit so, so early in the game, too. Jesus Christ. Yeah, where did I find this one? I have no idea. <laughs> so, what'll it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and I am immediately overwhelmed. I'll have, uh... Godspeed, you black coffee. Ice, Tegan, and Stara? I'm gonna just go black coffee. I don't need the add the add-ons. A classic. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Godspeed, you Black Emperor, is a really amazing and influential progressive rock band known for their sweeping soundscapes and- Hey. I'm doing the thing again. Hmm. But coming right up. Hmm. And for you? I'll have a macchiato de Marco, please. Hey. Coming right up. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? This guy's got taste. Uh, medium. Wait, is it big- is biggie smalls big or small? Uh... I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets to making our drinks, and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to, anyways. That's just fucking me, man. I got, I got, I listen to JPEG Mop. Come on, guys. I got, I got taste. Hey, hey. Ska was cool once. Okay, I don't like that. Being a fan of ska has been projected onto me. I don't think I've ever gone out of my way to listen to a ska album in my life. Not that there's anything wrong with the genre, it's just never, like, crossed my mind. Thanks for the hundred bits, Burn the Rat, appreciate it. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support, you sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. Uh, I don't know. Come on, what'd we say about meeting new people? That I'm afraid of it. Were you listening? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. See, we're making progress. Matt sets our drinks down at our table and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. Yeah. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda and this is my dad. Quite. Hey. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe in come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Oh. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test it first, so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of... Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that nana bread a taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be commensurate with, uh... I've taught her well. We have trade for this day. I was just gonna give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right. Yes. That. Matt serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. This is amazing. Hey, dude. Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. Hmm. 
So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Grateful banana bread. Banana bread Kennedys? I like the Kennedys ones a lot. New whip, take the top off like a Kennedy, you know what I'm saying? You know, like the punk band? Hey. I thought you said you only knew dad band puns. I'm a hard dad. That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Hey. Yeah, banana bread Kennedys. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. Oh, good God. Hey. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth. And maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Hey. Hey. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. Hey. See, it sounds good when you say it. <gasps> Fuck! Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, rooting over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet, just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? That's Springtrap? Yeah. We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? I should get back to unpacking? Am I napping, or am I, am I unpacking? I feel like unpacking will give us another option, right? I've got a lot on my plate right now. Did you know that moving is one of the biggest sources of stress for adults? This is real. Is it right behind the constant fear that you smell bad and everyone's too polite to tell you? Probably. Do I smell bad? Amanda gives me a whiff. You're fine, pops. Let's go home. Damn, we got a gamer household? Let's go. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I get some work, some good work done. The washer-dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? I walk over to the door and open it. Hello. Uh. A handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? <laughs> oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. I don't like the way his, like, belt defies the laws of physics. Oh yes, hi, quite. That's what my name is. <laughs> I saw the moving van, I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Matt would have baked those cookies himself. It's just, it's all I'm saying. It's all, it's all I'm saying. It's not, not, it's not like it's a competition, but... Joseph leans in and whispers. But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. Oh! Okay, that might, that changes the dynamic. That changes the dynamic. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Yeah! Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Hmm. <laughs> well, thanks for the cookies. Ooh, cracker nuts! Ooh, cracker nuts? What the fuck is that voice line? <laughs> Amanda disappears with the cookies. Oh. Amanda, come back. Yeah, and she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Oh. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Hmm. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. Oh. I have four kids. Fuck. Fumbled that bag. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant, <laughs> don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met, and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh. Is the missus around? Mister, actually, and, uh... No, not anymore. He died. But, come on, I'm, I'm usually better in social interactions than this. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not, like, fucking... Listen, I'm not anybody's first, like, go-to for, like, how to be a sociable person. But Jesus Christ! I, I'm not this bad. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Oh. I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. No, I, th I think it was mostly me, because there's like more tactful ways to say that shit. This is my fault, and I, I did, I would never have talked. I would never have done this. I'm just saying. I know we just met, but me husband's dead. Hmm. I'm sorry. Can you? Close the door real quick. I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge Ooh. smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise to not talk about your dead spouse this time. 
<laughs> oh, good guy. Good guy, that. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? Oh. That sounds great. My daughter and Amanda, my daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the hey. deal. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Whose name I did not get. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Oh. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Yeah. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. <laughs> where, where, where's the button? Which button? Which button did I have set up? My fucking gimme, give gimme give a second. My my VTuber commands weren't working. God damn it! I was trying to do the funny uh. Where's the blush command? God, God fucking damn it. There it is. There it is. It took fucking four goddamn tries, but there it is. Jesus. That was embarrassing. Forgot I had those for a while. And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. Yeah. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? So she's just lying to me. I have a manipulative daughter. This is painful. I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Joseph probably wants his plate back. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. We're going to be the best neighborhood the neighbors in this whole cul-de-sac. We're going to kick all the other neighbors' butts. With kindness. Amanda and I step outside. Okay. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house mm -hmm. is his. I'd hazard a guess it's the big one with one of the with all of the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Good eye, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. Jushi... Please, like, sew your mouth shut. Like, I'm fucking begging you. Like, seriously. Hey, guys, is your dad around? That's a weird question to ask a bunch of kids. And those two look like they're from The Shining. They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to, uh, return this nice plate. And thank you for the cookies. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph's kids. They all look exactly like him. What? They were really good. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. <laughs> I chuckled nervously. Hmm. Well, okay, we're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and then back away slowly. Right, Dad? Right, that's what we're gonna do. The kids' eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back even as we approach our house. Yeah. I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. I need to rest my eyes. Hmm. You've been awake for what, three hours? And that's three hours too many. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Quite, bro. bro. I turn around and am greeting a familiar face jogging up to us. A wooga? A wooga? Craig? Bro. Bro. Hmm. Holy. Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Mm -hmm. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. Fuck! Like, ooh, it's one of them rekindling an old flame. Oh, fuck! The story writes itself. Shit! <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Nice. Aw, uh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He named his kid River. That's incredible. Cute kid, too. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up at two exams with bad hangovers, and next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Mm -hmm. I was working out in California. Just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of the town. Inside of town. How's Smashly doing? Oh. 
I mean Ashley. Ashley is her name. I don't know. She actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Hmm. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all co-piquetic, co co-parenting. Twins, you have three kids? Ain't life something, bro, right? Keg Stan Craig is a father of three. Hmm. Keg Stan Craig? Hmm. Oh, haha. <laughs> yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Yeah, we figured. Oh. Is that thing where you you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg? Eh? Right? He was very good at it. Hmm. Ah, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. He's blowing snot out of his mouth. Your jog daily? I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. All right, sure, sounds great. Great, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his ears by earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm really. Why's that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time, I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Yeah, what's wrong with that? You're making me insecure. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy, and then I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said, and I quote, It's basically a smoothie, bro. <laughs> is it lagging for anybody else? I just saw someone mention it in chat. Better safe than sorry, you know? Ah. God, quite. If you don't take Craig, I will. I'm, I'm deeply considering it. It's definitely between him and Matt right now. I don't know how many options are in this game, but those are my two front runners. You know, Joseph seems nice. I already forgot the first guy's name, I'm gonna be honest. Like, that dude just, like, spent the whole time one-upping me. Not cool. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. There's six dads? Okay, I'll, I'll wait till I see all of them first. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Uh. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, oh, dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on, I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Yes. A dog? Yes. Forget art school, I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck, I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for get me to give up my all my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and simple needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. Amanda laughs. Hmm. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slide through the mail slot. Speaking of college... <laughs> Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it! Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. <sighs> yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. I hold my- Listen. I don't care if you have a letter opener. You should be like getting your fingers in that bitch, alright? Like you should be like digging in there and like ripping it open. That's how letters were meant to be open. If whoever invented a tool to open letters is like blasphemy. If the envelope is still intact, by the time you've, like, pulled the card out of the envelope, you did it wrong. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application. Blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Well, <sighs> she throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Oh. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Mm. 
Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? Huh? I'm fine. Really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. So... You need me out of the way because I'm a painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but... Yes. Dick. I'm really cool, guys. That's why you all watch me on twitch.tv slash quite, because of how cool I am. You wouldn't hang around with me if I was lame, right? Right, guys? Right? Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Yeah, what are your plans? Quick, think of plans. I'm secretly the mayor of this town. Gotta attend the union meeting. I'm going clubbing. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves, the lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man, you know, the ones all the, the kids these days are doing. Hmm. All right, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding, I'm actually going to go to bed, go out and watch the game? I'll watch the game. Nice. Hmm. Which game? Shit! You know, the game, the one that's on tonight. The game, on TV, at somewhere other than here. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white-collar crime by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. Yeah, something you can build a career off of. Not like fucking teenage shit, dude. Seriously. Gotta raise the cooler daughter than that. <laughs> I'm a street rat, pops. Yeah. At least be trapping. Like, come on. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? <gasps> yes, Dad. Just making sure. <laughs> I give her a pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Ugh. No, making fun of sports is played out. All right, then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda yeah. stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Time to participate in some light drinking. Wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. So I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? <gasps> a big burned out neon sign hangs above tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, it'll do. I got a nice selection. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls, balls, sound of the pack as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. Give me a second, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna get in the mood, you're right. I'm really about immersion in the games that I play. So I'm gonna go grab another quiet clock, you know, just to, just to get, get into it, you know what I'm saying? Relax, guys, chill. Seriously, relax. Seriously, relax. Oh, are we doing a vote on which, like, father figure you want me to find? Guess we're about to see. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice-cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. <laughs> oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the, g the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. 
The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Mm. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Oh no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm quite, by the way. Uh. Are you watching the game? Capital T, capital G. Ew, Woman! Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh. Oh, I love that team. And also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Guys, I don't want to see any mommy comments. This is the wrong stream to be saying mommy in, alright? This is- this is a- I was about to say, like, this is a- I'm not gonna make that joke, that's too far. It's gonna be like, this is like a woman-hating stream, but nah, nah, nah. We're not going that far. Save your fucking mommy comments for a different stream, guys. This is not the place for that. This is not the place. Seriously, y'all do not understand thematic timing at all. Y'all y'all need to find... I should ban y'all. I should ban y'all. But this is like... This is supposed to be a very homosexual stream, and you're really fucking it up for me. Alright, so... You guys are assholes. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. She's literally a wine mom, guys. It's not the fun kind of mom. That's not the fun kind. Actually, no, it is. That's a lie. Ban all women. Easy. Uh, mm. buy a gala drink? No, bitch. Uh, maybe some other time. Come on. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. <gasps> it's Springtrap. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win slash loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response, an unspoken truth formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. That's a good name. Thanks, I'm quite. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town, as slimy, slimy as it gets. You'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or a Kim that runs this place? Nope. That'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. I don't know. They got Armstrong. What more do you fucking want than going to the moon? Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? I like shots. Thank you. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Huh. Here's to your health. That's not a shot, that's like a full glass. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. <laughs> Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, quite. This guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his cool leather jacket. Compliment his hand tattoo. Hey, with my luck, it's going to be a prison tat, and he's, and he's ashamed of it. I'm pretty sure all of these things will get me, like, him mad at me in some way. Cool leather jacket. CLJ. That's a good, that's a good abbreviation, so I'm thinking that. Just gay, 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 gay over and over again in the chat. Compliment his rugged good looks. Ooh, hot damn jacket. Mm, let's go rugged good looks. Your face is... Good. <laughs> Thanks. Wait, I think this is what flirting is. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? 
My daughter kicked me out of the house. Not like forever. She was having a sleepover with her friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. He gets up. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Huh. I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You headed my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking the same direction. Oh. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Of course he fucking does. Every You and all your competition, bud. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Hey. Great place to be. The neighbors, well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell quite. So are we doing this or what? What? Hey. You know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. <gasps> Oh, fuck do I? It feels so soon. It feels so soon. Lay it on smooth. Oh, it feels so soon. I haven't decided yet. I'm still, I'm still conflicted. I'm still conflicted. I'm still conflicted. I, I, like, I, I'm, I can't choose between him or Craig or Matt. There's too many. There's too many, dude. I don't think I can yet. It, I just met this guy. I just met this guy. I just met this guy. That's not what I do. You can't romance him? Oh, fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's too soon. You already know some good people. I can't, guys. I can't. I just met him. I'd better call it a night. Catch you around? Mm -hmm. Sure. I head home, head buzzing with whiskey. What did he mean by, are we going to do this or not? I plop down on the couch, and I'm asleep before even I get the chance to take my shoes off. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6am? Who does 6am anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I checked my phone again. Hey bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. I'm going to the gym. Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. Capital T, capital G. I stretch and my bones creak. I got to stop falling asleep on the couch. Seriously, that's bad for your back. I throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait. I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly blush my, brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. Oh, they got a fucking drum and bass song in this? That's a kick-ass backing track. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching. Of course, he spots me and waves enthusiastically. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey, bro. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. You ready to kick some butt? Gotta stay posy, dude. With your help, I am. I get the feeling this is gonna be a less of me kicking butt and more the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Dude, bro. That means a lot. Bro. Is that his voice? Interesting. We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. And it seems like Craig is friends with all of them? Oh. Where's the baby? You're, listen, you can't like really take a baby to a gym and like super safely work out. You can't use the machines with the baby strapped to your chest. Jogging's easier. Maybe biking. He high fives and finger guns all of the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be. Walking. So I know we are on treadmills. Hmm. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Oh. Very good. What is all this other stuff? <laughs> Craig laughs. Hey. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes muscle I didn't know existed on a machine I think was once used to process grain into flour. 
What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? Nice. That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Training to crush people's souls, skulls with his thighs. Using a medieval torture device. Praying to some sort of pain god. That's the mo- that's like the most- That's like the reference I think I'm probably most in tune with. It's like, uh, a religious self-flagellation meant to atone for one's sins. Mm. You're actually not far off from the truth. Mm. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How, uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? Nice. A couple years. And what do you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Oh, oh I coach my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? I love learning. I try to live my life as close to a Jimmy Buffett song as possible. I check out my hot bod. Well, I do that bottom one because I have an incredible physique. Like, I just look into the mirror because of how incredible it is, but... Gay, gay, homosexual, gay. Definitely Jimmy Buffett song, probably. Learning is some nerd shit. You wish quite? <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You, I, I, don't, I don't blame you guys. I don't blame you guys. You don't get to see my body on a daily basis the same way I do. It's okay. You don't, you, you couldn't know. There's no way you could know. Jimmy Buffett, I think. The goal is to live with as few worries as I can muster. The lost saker of salt was a metaphor. Hmm. A metaphor about what? About not being able to shake salt onto something. Oh. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. I got a fist in all of those. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? No, I don't like this story. Oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it, too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we were at that party, and you vowed to make me feel better. You told me to create a distraction, so of course I do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. And then I... Try to steal a fish from a fish tank at a party with my bare hands, like an idiot. Hey. And then you drop the fish, and it's flopping around, and you panic, so you run up to a post keg stand with a dying, dirty fish in your hand that you scooped off of the ground, and you're yelling at me that we have to leave. Hey. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and we get him home and get him into a bowl of water with the prognosis was grim. And the next day, he's... Uh, alive and well. Bro. They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridgeview. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Nice. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and looks me over for industries. I'm fantastic. I manage to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. Oh. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. Oh. You sure? Yeah. Oh. All right, well, here, I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of a thick green li liquid. I stare at it with what must be apparent distaste. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Bro. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud hey. of it. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Yeah, my drink purple, not lean though, is G Fuel. Let me know if you... Uh, if treadmills aren't your speed, no pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm gonna go put some ice on this. Everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I don't get it. I chose the athletic body type. I should be fucking, like... I should be just as fast as him. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. What, it, what the fuck is my job? I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? 
I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vegas classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine, up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a peace of mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his oh. locker. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Oh. Oh, good God. Oh, good God. <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Huh. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Um... You must be quiet. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Oh. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Ah. The whole class erupts in laughter. Oh. Alright, alright, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Huh? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm? Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Uh... Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. You know, this guy looks a lot like a bitmoji. Nope. Oh. Please, call me Hugo. Uh, I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Eh. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments, and, her, and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda had always shared everything with me. I hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Yeah, that sounds like a parent. Am I hunting Dilfs again? What do you mean again? So, <laughs> Freddy Fazbear, dude? Oh, uh, why do I see it with like a fucking bow tie too, dude? That's fucked up. That's fucked up. <sighs> I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved. Thanks for the sub, Neon Spider. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Ah. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this mm. road, I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on the scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Mm. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Mm? Yes? They ever catch that rye? <laughs> ah. Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out to school. I'm, Seema, I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Ah. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Uh, we... Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jace, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also, sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. 
Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? <laughs> what? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Hmm. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Yeah. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. Uh I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. You, why the fuck would you bring that up? I, that is so dumb. Oh my god. I'm, why is my character so goddamn dumb? Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Shut the fuck up. Yep. Hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you get it. Okay. Who you texted? <laughs> Noah? Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Huh? What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would. Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez. What would you? Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. That was not suspicious at all. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation's over. To the mall, then. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Hell yeah. Language, Missy. Heck yeah? Better. Here's my rule. If YouTube, like, wouldn't demonetize me for it, my kid can say it. <laughs> and hell is not considered a bad word. I go by the Google standard. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be there. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and a naturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. Hey. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Mm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. Man, I could go for some nachos right now. Fuck. So, something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? God damn it. God damn it. Fuck, there's that that's not an answerable question. Memes are a language, not a singular thing that has a definition. Hmm. <sighs> Which meme? All all meme. Mm. This is how I felt as like a 2018 commentary YouTuber telling my fans to text their parents a fucking fried, like a cursed fried meme and like get the reactions. All, all. Aww. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, dad, all us use have already done the joke to death. That's a really fucking succinct explanation. Inside jokes are an accessible thing to pretty much people of all ages. And like, every, most people can understand the idea of beating a dead horse. That was, that's a, that is, that's very well, that's very well put. Yeah. And what's worse than that is movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on the meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and isn't funny. Oh shit, what a- <sighs> Dad, please. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goss store? Hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment? I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Uh -huh. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah. Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. <laughs> 
There it is. You can still see the outline, kind of. I'm so proud. Speech. Amanda. Yeah. Speech. 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 All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape history. No, it's not history. It's herstory. <laughs> On a day very much like today, some five years ago, her very own Amanda Ann quote had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her to stop, after begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond <laughs> to buy rainbow suspenders, that's a funny name. She proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their head. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Oh, hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself at looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something interesting to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in a dead goth and beyond. Peruse the band t-shirts? Look at ironic mugs. I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? This whole time I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stop. It's a fucking vampire? What the hell? Alucard looking ass. I overhear a stifled argument. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and sh showing it to a bored looking cashier. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work oh here. Oh my. Listen, when I brought- he sounds like Shadow the Hedgehog. When I bought this online, the website said this blouse was clearly Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Uh. Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man rolls around and storms out, his literal coat dales trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trops up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dadtron5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt of the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. Huh. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes, so I'm worried she pull, she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the combo is over. We make our way out the store and head home. Amanda and I sit on the couch, trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool, Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on, your favorite, right? Oh hell yes, they have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts. Also the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Caleb and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril, in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghosts have done got control of the truck. I can't steer on them, they're these damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying, You're going to die. That's because we are about to die. This is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. Good for her. Good for her. It's just like you guys. I stay up, curious about the exploits of Caleb and Flint after their disastrous ice road incident. Afterward, I crawl into bed. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. Seriously, what the fuck is my job? What do I do? We have- I, I've, I've not seen me in a workplace environment the entire time we've been here, or had any mention made of it. I don't know. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting behind- uh, putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves in one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So you excited for the cookout? Excited to beef up my grilling skills. I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can consider it a success. 
Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Hmm. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts up through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set down the veggie plate. Next, two other veggie plates. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. They stare creepily and say nothing. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Chris. Wait, where is Chris? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. Fuck! I'm so- dude, I'm really glad I did not buy her a drink. Shit, shit, that would have been fucking awkward! 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 Oh no, it's the- Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Chris to bed? I'll have to go look for him. What? You'll have to- Oh. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Quite and his daughter, Amanda. Ah. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Yeah. <laughs> my wife has had a, has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to beat you. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Dad. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. <laughs> Dad? They're going to talk about weather. <laughs> The weather, weather, weather talk could be nice. I've had invigorating weather talks. It's what... Conversation is what you make of it. Go, do it, make a friend. How could I possibly abandon my child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Fucking disown. Jesus Christ. Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Here goes nothing. Isn't that barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. <laughs> hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Matt, Hugo, and Craig? That's like the, the tightest spread of people I'm interested in, so I'm going for that. Oh. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Hey, look, his kid stopped blowing a snot bubble. I got I got them all next to each other, so I can I can do like some comparison. So like Craig's taller, like that's off the bat, like that's bonus. I I really like the way that uh, Matt looks in glasses. I think he rocks them properly. God, there's a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot to think about here, guys. Isn't it funny how I fit in with the art style of the game? Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. Blah 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 blah. The Rococo period, and compared to the most modern in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a, a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be busy, so they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. I'm gonna talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance trading go the other day? Oh. Great, little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. Oh. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. <laughs> she must be a handful at that age. Hmm. Oh, they always are. Hey. 
but it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arm again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. How you setting in? I never get too comfortable. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Nice. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Quite. how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds, weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in them. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Oh, they have matching watches. That's cute. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Hmm, nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Uh -oh. <laughs> hey, quite, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmencita. I hope I said that right, fuck. I'm butchering names all left and right today. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and, uh, your teacher? <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Ah. Yep. Why was his mic quality on that line so much worse than everybody else? <laughs> you still gonna get me that overdue term paper? Huh, <sighs> <laughs> great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. Good for her. She learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Sweet Manchego. Yeah, nah, his mic is way worse than fucking everybody else's, man. <laughs> like most low quality dad of the f low quality dad voice of the bunch. <laughs> Guys, I gotta run an ad break. I need to get some water. Give me a second here. <laughs> Yeah, the thing with, like, games like this, like, that are a lot of reading, they're fun, but, like, I try to, like, put the character shit into it, and it takes a lot out of my throat, as opposed to me just playing a game that is kind of react me reacting to stuff. Uh, you know, it's late. It, it, it kind of chips away at it. And I recorded a video, like, literally right before the stream, so I've had, like, no chance to rest my vocal cords, so I gotta get, I gotta stay hydrated. To anybody who's played before, do you know how long, like, a typical playthrough of this game will take? Because ideally, like, I could finish this run tonight. And then maybe do a different one before. Not sure, though. You want Damien, that sexy goth man? About four hours? Okay, that's a lot. This might have to be a two-stream deal. Not that long. Your voice is gonna die, fuck. Yeah, we'll either be up late or we'll have to fucking split this across a few streams, like one or two. Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his uh -huh. eyes go wide. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Mm -hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. Yeah, he casually takes a long drag of a cigarette then flicks it into mm -hmm. a gutter. 
Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Hmm. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. <sighs> Hugo walks over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Quite. This is my son, Ernest. Hello. Where the fuck did he get the cigarette? Ernest looks away, sulking. His hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in 8th grade. Damn, smoking that young. Are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Er, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Okay, that's kind of based. Like, he's kind of, like... He shouldn't be smoking, but, like, he was right. Like, he's telling the truth. Ouch. Eh. Ernest? Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Hmm. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. Hmm? I mean, I think as a dad and teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. I would never say that shit. Hey. See, that right there. You can't say that. Oh. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh, don't know. Hey. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Mm -hmm. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Um... As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kid. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right, but it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that hey. happens? Don't let us eat up your time quite. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Alright, I'm gonna meet... I'm gonna go meet everybody at this barbecue, burger time, and then I'm gonna call the dad, the dream daddy section of the stream. I'll probably react to some shit after. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one up by Brian or whatever happened with Bri Robert last night. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. Hey. What? How the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order at least. Hey. That's great to hear. Is this the one that Aaron, like from Ego Raptor, fucking voices? I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great and high def. Oh boy. Oh. Wait, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. Oh. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Ryan raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside making art. She won a local competition for that art. Yep. Did I put it on too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Anyway... <laughs> I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change once you have kit. Wait, what happened the last time? Hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him in the army day. I met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They build them tougher out there. Anyways, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle ankle when the rope bridge no. snaps. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the wound, but now I got a fireman carry a six-foot, 180-pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been on. Hmm. 
I won't lie to you. There were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny boy. But you build a bond with your brothers in arms. And that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization. But I lost some of me out there. Mm -hmm. I guess that's camping for you. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's a bit intense, man. It's a little intense. Yeah, grim, right? Grim. They were fucking, by the way. Definitely fucking. Ryan and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went inner tubing down a river, and he lost a flip-flop. Missed that kid. Hey. Ryan and I laugh nervously. Hmm. Or am I kidding? Hmm. Ryan and I tense up again. I... I'm kidding. And he's going to double back again. Oh. Whew. Ah. Amanda and Daisy barrel us up to us laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We got to get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Yeah. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Dad. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess. And then we'll get out the truck. Mm -hmm. The imaginary truck. <laughs> anyway, we're safe from the ghosts. But how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly mm -hmm. cook you. You can eat human raw. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert? Hey. Wait a second, are you guys... playing? Long haul ice road pair noble ghost truckers? No way! No way! Yeah. Amanda and I love that show. Hey. It's the best, especially that episode where Caleb hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him, yeah! It's such quality reality television. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. <laughs> All right, Daisy. I found us a couple of bugs. They're going to make a great meal. Lots of protein. Going to keep us from starving out here in the harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms for the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a yeah. fire. Okay. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? All right. Now you're getting it. <laughs> Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teacher says she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. Ugh, I'm not... I hate, I hate to break this to you, man. It sounds like your kid's a fucking loser. <laughs> there it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. Used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people, too. Oh, kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to, by law. I hear that. Hey. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them? They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Hey. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead, Goth, and Beyond by the Grill. I wonder what they're talking about. Huh? I walk over to them. So I'm curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Hmm. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter, it provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Oh. It's definitely an interesting choice. Uh. Thank you, I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Quite, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turned bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no way for a gentleman to act. It's... Okay, man. <laughs> you tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes. My daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. <laughs> Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second, I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Aye. 
Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee hipster with some norm core leanings. Okay. Bats are cool, though. Ah, pity. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so more friendly and welcoming. Oh, yeah. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Huh. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? Huh. And it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch. His fucking last name is Bloodmarch? Fucking Christ! That's... N blessed, blessed by, like, her like, heritage, bro. Like, you were destined for this. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Yeah. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with curtsy. Yeah. My, do you know how you do you know how to treat a lady? Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Yeah. Hey, won't you come play with us, guys? I hate to tell you this, but fucking Joseph's off the off the the roster. Because if I date him, I gotta see those fucking kids. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing that shit. I am not doing that shit. Hmm. Uh, come play with us yeah. forever, <laughs> guys. Enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've tried. We've talked about oh. this. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they get that from? Uh. Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. Uh. I uh don't know. Mm. <laughs> fucking Christ. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. Oh I think I might have taped over a Veggie Tales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Oh. Where's Krish? Ugh. Wasn't he with you? <laughs> you had him a moment ago. Hmm. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Ew, woman. Mary tips her glass to me. Oh. In my first time to the rodeo, it's my fourth. Ugh. I have squeezed four little... Oh. Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. Hmm. I'm sure he's fine. Mary? Hmm? Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Hmm. Ah, Lucian, have I introduced you to quite yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever. Sir... Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. Hmm. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. What bitches? Dad. Eh. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor? <laughs> Whoa, is that a tattoo? <laughs> yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Wanna see mine? Oh, my. What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, re <gasps> revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. You're not getting that fucking burger no more, dude. You can say goodbye to your burger. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian. Mm. We'll talk about this later. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Huh? Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figure youth pastors popped out the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Hmm. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on his grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. Oh. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese and onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. You probably didn't know this quite, but Joseph's known around here for his grillsmanship. Hey. He's ungrillievable. Hey. I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Hey. Let us keep steadying. He has a rare quality about him. Uh. Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? I've never seen him make a mistake. Ah. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Please stop. 
This is hell. This is hell for these children. All the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. Yeah. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Oh. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Mm. Hey, why don't you all add us on Dadbook? Dadbook? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. Fucking Christ. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Sita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in me. I felt like I was at a networking event. I wish I could have been playing paranormal. Oh, you and Daisy seemed like you were having a way better time than I was. Because we were. Hmm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadbook. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Oh. Alright, I think that's where I'm going to call it on Dream Daddy for today. Uh, this will probably be the first part of, like, two videos I do? At least one. It, I'm doing at least one Dream Daddy video. This is for a video that's meant to go out later this week. But oh, my throat is, like, raw right now, dog. I am parched. The stream's not over, by the way. Did I save? Yes. Uh, but by the way, did you know if you're watching this on YouTube, you missed out on all the gay stuff live? Kind of cringe. On twitch.tv slash quite on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Be here. All right. Oh, damn it. Stream isn't over. Dave, you want me gone that bad, huh? That hurts, you know. That hurts. That stinks. L plus gay nerds. Oh fuck, I need I need to do some React Andy content. I need to let my voice get abreast. There is a new monument mythos, by the way. It's a short one, but I wanted to watch it on stream before I forget about it. It's called My First House Sighting. Holy shit, I just farted, holy shit. But yeah, new uh, new monument mythos. If you guys have not seen these, uh, this series is like one of my favorite analog horrors. It's great. My first house sighting. You know that feeling towards the end of a movie when you can't remember what you just watched? When you can't remember how you got to this point of the story. It feels like you weren't paying attention earlier, but you know you were. I'm having that feeling now. I don't remember leaving the house. I don't remember starting the car. I don't remember crossing state borders. I don't remember this power plant. In fact, I don't remember recording any of this footage. Yeah, this is the new monument mythos. Except. I remember this golden flag. A lifeguard told me that golden flags are exclusively for house sightings. She also said that the house was a mirage.
house. Big house. It's a horror series if you haven't seen them before. House go vroom. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's a pretty short one. From what I can tell, considering it's two minutes long. There was a an ARG. It's like a shorter one that I remember we like came across uh, while we were on stream and I was like, I'll watch this later. Lame. I mean, it's like not... Do you want it to just jump in your face and be a Five Nights at Freddy's drum scare? Was that the Backrooms? Nah. Different one. We watched the Backrooms. It was a underscore voice vort, vort or whatever. This one had like a bunch of really short videos. Thanks for the sub, Autistic Turtle. Appreciate it. Okay, uh... Here is... These are troubling times, my friend. During such tribulation, let us focus on the small victories. Waking at a reasonable hour. I'm not sure if this is an ARG, or just like a cute little animation series. Ignoring the noises downstairs. Ooh. Staying productive. Ignoring the noises. Damn, he's schmoovin', bro. Look at him. Look at him go. That's creepy. That's like really unsettling. Like that put a tingle in my spine. That was neat. That was really neat. I didn't expect to like it turn to turn into that that quickly. Tenant. Demo for a game that will never exist. Oh, this guy has an NES, Lucky. All I have is the Lego one. When you be shitting. Ariel, come along, Ar Ariel. There is a thing you must do. You know what to do. Pay him a visit. The receptionist. Oh, you're back. Your timing is excellent. You've been looking for a replacement security ever since you left. <gasps> Five Nights at Freddy's. We are evicting a large number of tenants for repeated infractions. Go down to the first floor, evict anyone with an unmarked door. Take this as hell, as well. He cut the power yesterday. Ugh. Ugh, that was a noise. Marked, marked, marked. Bro's like, nah, I'm going back. Fuck that. I'm out of here. Use Duriel's flashlight. The eyes stare back. I'm gonna get some water real fast before we finish up. Or finish, keep watching. I mean.
it's less reading, but it's still reading because there's like text on screen. God, I hate reading so much. In the walls. These are all like nice and short, thankfully. Oh, the walls ha are bleeding. The aesthetic of this series so far is crazy. Like, it, it, it's real, uh, I almost want to say DS camera-esque, if that makes sense. Like, this reminds me a lot of, like, the um, Flipnote Hatena look. It also, the game, like, the GB, like, the Game Boy camera from, like, the 90s. Like, it, I don't, it weirdly reminds me of that, if that makes sense. What series is this? Uh, it's whatever this channel name is. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. Yeah, it's real 3DS camera. They don't know. This is the coolest flip of a meme into like a horror thing I think I've seen. Anvil head. He's the best dancer at that party, easily. All right, see you, Jukes only. I was interested in this video earlier. I want to watch this after. They don't know. I feel like this guy's going to talk, and that'll be like a much easier video to relax my throat to. Burning.mp4. It has been a year now. The cycle continues. Wake up. Watch them. Why are you in the basement? Love this art style. I do too, man. Like, the visuals in this series go hard as shit. You fucking can't. Wait, I, I missed that. Do something. Anything. You fucking coward. I'm definitely going to check out that person's Twitter after this. You know, just like on my own time. Is that shit, that, this goes hard as hell, like this goes hard as fuck. His account doesn't exist? Okay, L. L for me. What, is, what, what are these like fan dub shits I'm seeing? Continue? It's over. Take a chance. I can tell this is like placed over real footage that's been taken. Like it's animated on top. Also, this beat goes hard. I kind of want this beat. This, this goes hard as shit. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what's happening, but it looks neat. Oh, murder. I, I get it now. Oh, I, I had the underscore in the wrong spot okay it's not on there that account is not on twitter i guess it's instagram then i met a beautiful angel
Corinthians 1831, was it? That looks fucky as hell with that filter on it. Like, it's just a bunch of pipes, but it looks so weird. The leg thing isn't so cute. Yeah, right? Yeah, amorphous masses are a bit more unsettling than cute. Bob mod, Bob mod. I just see a lot of random nothing stuff, and I just say Bob mod. Makes me laugh every time. The complex. They are all far away, and so it is quiet. Don't breathe. They will ruin it. That's a really weird visual. Like, I know it's just a dude on stilts. Fuck. It is quiet. What, what did that say? The quilled god rages, goes and destroys in him aloft. Fuck, I missed that. Oh, he, he fucking, damn, he fucking. People with asthma be like, we won't talk to them anymore. And so it is quiet. All right, good night, Bumblebee. Have a good one. What are deep web heat wave files? This thumbnail looks crazy. Y'all saw the word heat waves and ran, jeez. Fuck. I don't like I don't know what to make. I don't know what to make like of most of these. I'm not I'm not gonna go in that QR code as your prerogative if you want to look, but I don't know. Visually all of these things are just stunning, man. Like I haven't been disappointed by the aesthetic of a single one of these videos so far. Entirely beloved. I think this was one of the ones that was in my recommended that I first found this through. Yeah, we're watching a... I don't know if it's a series, but it's like a collection of aesthetically similar videos, at least, on the same channel. I have seen it. I have heard of it. To draw near without... Oh, that's trippy. I would hate to watch this while I'm high. I would freak out. I have sought you out. But it is to no avail. I am immobilized. D 
discomfort stream right here? Always, man. Here. That's what we aim for here on the Quiet Channel. Detaching yourself from those with everything. Anvil head. Anvil head. That's Kanye coming up on the stage. You will see it. Thanks for the 60 bits, Kenna. Pear. Pear? <laughs> Wait, did he say p Pear? Is that love in a different language? I don't know. Yeah, legit Drake on fucking, like... What was it? Greatest? I forgot the name of the song. They are singing with pain in their heart. It is nothing short of a miracle. This is a crazy 100 gex song. Center text reads video feed unavailable. This actually says video feed offline. Apparently you can't read. Subtitler. Idiot. Dummy. Dummy. Crawling. Isolation. That embedded itself beneath my heart. I can repudiate it no longer. Mysterious anime outline. This is my home. It is empty. It is cold. Fuck. I got a few friends who would love this thing. This is the most high res video on this channel so far. Those are the clearest images I've seen. This late at night? Yeah, is when I usually watch these things. I was dumb enough to watch Mandela Catalog right before I went to sleep for the first time. And I, I and when I first watched Mandela Catalog, when like somebody suggested it to me like months ago, I'm I I was like rusty on this shit. I wasn't used to watching these videos in so long. I shit myself. Like I was like paranoid going to bed. Why would you do that to yourself? Stream content. Plus, I was curious. I like things like this, you know? Also, the creator follows me on Twitter now, and he makes, like, funny jokes, so it's really humanized it for me. <laughs> it's made it a little bit easier. probably get your hand looked at dog like i won't lie to you it's a little easier to it, like watch the mandela catalog when he'll post behind the scenes photos of like how he fucked up his drywall to get a certain shot like it's it's pretty funny <laughs> zoning ordinance Knife. Can you believe they used to pronounce the K in knife? It just doesn't sound right. Knife? It's not as threatening like that. Last time I was here, it was Dream Daddy. My throat was getting raw, so we switched gears to something that is a little more relaxed. Yeah, he made two videos making fun of his own series. I love that guy. He's great. Why does this choreography go kind of hard? Like, this sort of whips. Your throat was getting raw? I was using my voice a lot. Yeah, you guys are so... It was feeling raw. Growing raw. God, I can't even feel fatigue without being sexualized. I 
limited recalcitrant. Wait, what did that say? Wait, 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 wait. There's a lot of Easter eggs in there. Fucking actions, attacks, items. Five days ago. Unlimited recalcitrants, beguiling teeth, knife, ethereal foray. There's definitely a story to piece together there that I'm too lazy. Oh no, our legs, it's broken. Oh no, I've been stabbed. This is unfortunate. Can you picture an empty room with yourself at the center? Answer me quickly, I, I dead ass thought that was me for a Can second and I like shit myself. Like I thought that was me in the like in my webcam, like what the center. fuck? I don't know. Is there still enough space in the hallway to continue? I don't know. Complex is an aberration, yet you have shredded a hole within yourself that only it may fill. Do you know what you must do? Yeah, he bit his bit his lip a little too hard, trying to act sexy a little too much. For there is slaughter in the new Jerusalem, cry out, so that one may ignore. That's a big ass arm. Modular face, good to know. This is crazy, man. Jesus. And, and there's there's a little Morse code at the end there if you didn't see in the subtitles. I'm not translating that, but it's there. All right, last one. Last one. I thought that was Oblivion music for a second. I'm brain dead. <laughs> this is so visually striking. Every video, like, evolves the... whatever notion you had of how the series is going to look moving forward. There's always some new kind of thing being added on top of it. Like, the, they were doing, like, the real basic meme stuff, or, like, the real basic animation stuff, added memes. Then they were doing, like, is like, a weird mix of animation and, like, real-life footage that was real low quality and a lot of video game aesthetics. Then they put in some HD shit and, like, mouths. It, 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 this goes crazy, man. This thing is so, this is so cool. I need an explanation video, because I, I have no idea what's happening, but it's neat. It's neat. God knows I'm not going to fucking piece it together myself, but somebody else wants to do the hard work. All right, uh, I'm going to pee real fast, and then I'm going to watch that Liminal Spaces video. In the meantime, give me money.
Okay, liminal space time. I love that stuff. Back from piss, yep, and washing hands. We're in a pandemic, guys. All right, so this video is how I became a liminal space photographer by uh, Alpha Oxtrot. It's been in my recommended a few times. Thank you, Sub Rumi Iraq. Do you recognize this photo? Have you been here? Do you have an overwhelming urge to touch the objects in this photo? Rub your feet against the carpet, mate. Dive into the couch. Gently caress Thanks the, the sub Drago powder. Huh? What about this one? Or this one? Or how about this one? You wanna you wanna dip your feet into that water? You wanna strip down nude and do dirty things in that water? Huh? <laughs> well, I do, and millions of other people do as well. All these photos I've shown you are liminal spaces. The concept of a liminal space is simple, not very complicated. Usually, an empty space uh, from the 90s to the 2010s, devoid of people. But the feeling that these images provoke in me. Good God. I, I he's got fucking critical in the background. Like watching the last episode of the best TV show you've ever He looks kind of I mean, like yeah, you'll feel I'm on TikTok. I'm happy I was able to he's witness like this, this guy TV who show. I'm also really sad old. that I'll never be able to experience it for the first time like this ever again. I know I'll never get that moment back. These images, they remind me of the happiest moments of my life. But at the same time, reminds me how I'm never going to be able to experience those moments again. Like being able to look at a photo of a loved one who's passed away. But knowing that you'll never be able to fully embrace them again. Like a this guy's going through pain. some shit. Well, today, I'm making it my mission. There's actually like... My own Goddamn liminal you know, phone. Online and phone phone these liminal like, spaces. Apparently there's like a thing called like digital self-harm where like you'll look up disparaging comments about yourself because you can't stop thinking about it, even though you know it like actively hurts you. Heard about it, and I'm like, damn, that's that's real. In the wild, the in the natural habitat. Now this might sound like a simple task. My friend, you are wrong. There are layers to a liminal photo. Rules that must be met. Am I capable of- <gasps> Wait, yo, yo, he played Rage music. Now this might sound like a simple task. My friend, you are wrong. There are layers to a liminal photo. Rules that must be met. I respect anybody who puts a, a, the Reach OST in a video. Quite, are you capable of having an actual sleep schedule? I do have one. <laughs> Rule number one. I'm not going to tell you guys because you, you'll like be able to time when like I'm sleeping so you can come fucking murder me. But I do have one. Definition of liminal is relating to a transitional or initial stage of a process occupying a position at or on both sides of a boundary threshold. Basically what this means is that a liminal space for the most part needs to take place in a transitional space like a hallway. A hallway is just the space you walk in between the rooms you're going to. This is my backyard is right here. Here's the grass as you can see. This is the place I do stuff in. And now I need to get to my kitchen where I'm going to make breakfast. To do so I must walk through a corridor right through the hallway into my kitchen right here the reason the hallway is the transitional space is because you don't do anything in a hallway <laughs> rich music alpha, yes thanks spaces i see are gas stations and hotels and, and, and so that doesn't make much sense alpha. check yourself because it does where do you think most people when you're a kid when you were a kid where you would go into a gas station or go into a, a, a hotel when you were on a road trip that's right, my friend. That's you were transitioning you didn't do shit in the your gas station. house your to the did. place you were staying. So everything in between those two places is a transitional space for you, my friend. Rule number two. The camera quality of these photos must be garbage. Complete and utter trash. You don't <laughs> have to have trash quality, but garbage quality brings out the nostalgic feeling even more. So the, the worse the quality, the better. It's this was a hard step for me. I rummaged through my entire house trying to find the oldest, shittest camera I could. And I thought shittest. I had found it. See this? This, my friend, is an iPhone 1. Original. The first. That would actually be this, like the jackpot. perfect Nothing device for taking worse than Then I took photos. a couple photos. The quality is good. It's not even bad. Really? It's actually okay. I was shocked. Damn. How could this be? But I then thought I it was going to be way this. worse. Sony Handycam with a 9.2 <laughs> megapixel still image recording. The iPhone 1 had a better this quality really photo good. than an actual camera that's at least a couple years younger think about this for a second this this is this does a ton of things this is a jack of all trades it does lots of stuff but it also takes photos and the photos is just a little side part little that they added in this is an actual camera this is a genuine camera made to take video and recording and it's younger by like several years but it was exactly what i needed the photos on this thing are complete garbage and so is the video so i have found my vessel rule number three the lighting in the photo must come from behind the camera as if the lighting's coming from the camera's flash itself now there's no that, flash I, on this I, camera. I haven't seen this one before behind this image right here the camera as if the
I really like the aesthetic of the long hallway and then the tornado outside. I think that's just cool. Lighting's coming from the camera's flash. I've, no, I've said no, aesthetic no a lot this camera, stream, man. So I gotta find a different word that implies like the same thing. But it gives the same effect. At least half of all the liminal photos I've, I've, I saw was in a completely dark environment where the only light came from behind the camera. I think the horrible quality and horrible lighting... Only following for six days? Got some new blood in like chat. ...could have taken the photo on a trip. The more professional, the worse. It's kind of like TikTok. All right, now the fourth <laughs> rule will happen if you implement the first three rules. I laughed too much. Nostalgia, nostalgia, nostalgia. I just, I, now, I'm like noticing new this things on his background. Process, like I'm going every to test to see if I have succeeded. And I'm going to post all my photos to the liminal space subreddit on Reddit. And I'm going to see if. Any... Like, did you guys notice that Gordon Ramsay's forehead was stacked on itself five times here? Or the handsome Squidward next to the handsome weekend sign? Or the Carl Weezer? Or the fact that this is the same, like, burning tree from earlier? Like, I'm... Nobody likes them, or if they provoke any nostalgia in people. There's make, always something make new. Maybe people feel the same way I feel when I look at liminal photos. But yeah, it's time to execute, boys. That transition was clean. It's windy as hell, so the audio's gonna be complete shit. Ah. Yeah, I'm sorry for actually being focused on the guy in the center of the frame, guys. My bad, my bad, for paying attention. The first time it's I've my bad. Since the pandemic, it's my fault. My chances of survival as an optimistic 65%. First liminal space I'll be taking pictures of? Bathrooms. It's one of the only liminal spaces that take place <laughs> during the day. This one's tricky, though, because in all the liminal space bathroom photos I see, there's always one thing off. Whether that be the toilet placement at the very corner... It's too damn far away. Nothing else around it's too damn far lights, away. Strangely not being on. Or an infinite regress of bathroom stalls. There's always one thing weird. Oh, this song's a banger. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but it's so good. There's some nice 80s music playing right now. Really fits the vibe. I don't know how I do this secretly. If somebody sees me taking pictures in a bathroom, they're gonna wonder what's going on. I look <laughs> creepy. Just jump okay. This song's a banger. It's so good. He's looking in two nice of establishments for these. He's got to, like... This guy has to go on a, like, road trip and go to a gas station bathroom off, like, fucking I-95 or something. So, I reviewed the liminal photos I took. He cut his hair in the last time. time. I've never been more disappointed. As I was strolling through the photos, it occurred to me, they're just toilets. <laughs> He's just got pictures of toilets really on this was the one of the dark Starbucks bathroom. Because I had taken an extra step just to turn the light off. I was flipping the light switch on and off in that Starbucks bathroom for at least 10 minutes, trying to get the right angle. Those employees never looked at me the same again. And for what? This? But I'm not giving up. Baby no, Buggles, if I've you want to go hang with your friends, just hang with your friends. The stream will, like, have a VOD that you can watch after. Big ass flashlight, ultra bright, thick with three Ks. This thing's brighter than the sun. Watch this. This should be illegal. The idea is if the bathroom. Yeah, give up on your front and your social life, actually. Enough, You're gonna be here forever. This thing out, along with my different colored LED light shades and hopefully create a liminal experience. And That's I don't actually care. an interesting idea. I don't idea. care if people stare at me. I don't care if there are people in the photos. And I don't care if they report me for taking photos in the women's bathroom. They look nicer. <laughs> That's not my fault. More stalls equals more limit. Oh yeah, look at this variety. They got Walgreens, Best Buy, Costco. They even got State Farm. Costco still a right? Oh wait, no, not Costco. <laughs> I was thinking of fucking Sears. I'm going to be an immovable object. No bathroom, <laughs> no one. <water. laughs> so day two was a bust. Not only were the bathrooms trash, but I was also kicked out a couple times. Apparently, it's not legal to record people in the bathroom. So yeah, I'm not that. I was too embarrassed to continue. So now it's time for plan B. Right now I'm at a park. You see this? Yeah. That's so, that was so funny Island. to watch. You know, Just like people walking by little him little while he's got his sunglasses and shit. Big, especially playgrounds. Only issue is right now there's a, there's a lot of children at the playground, which would be the only spot that would be very liminal. And I don't want to look like a, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to look like a, a, you know, kid diddler. That's, that's just too much for me. So I've got to wait for the parents and the children to leave. But in the meantime, <laughs> he put the fucking shame picture up. He put the fucking you know, shame picture up. That's, that's just too much for me. So I've got to wait for the parents and the children to leave. But in the meantime, are you kidding me? Oh, that would have been so good if he could have gotten in there. Oh dear God. Someone fucking fought for their life on that bitch earlier, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, 
knew I was not expecting this when I found like when I started watching the liminal space video. Oh my god. The coast is clear. Those slides, they look like they look like worms, like monsters. A little bit of red light should fit them well. I think this one could go well. Like those slides, just being as symmetrical as they are, could be pretty uncanny. Oh, that would that one looks good. I'm predicting how these will turn out before like we right, see guys, them. To end off this segment, I'm going to give you a lesson in liminality. Take notes. All right, now look at this photo. There is nothing happening in this photo. This is a two out of ten in liminality. But there's three things you can add to every single liminal photo to bump up the liminality by at least five points. Number one. Grain slash noise. Now this is the most basic one, but it really gets the job it, done. It, it, funny, it's funny you mentions that. I was trying to like give a slightly vintage look to my the it's like the single cover I used for a uh, pest, and I literally just put some fucking grain noise on that and messed with the uh, color correction slightly. And I was like, oh yeah, this is good to go. We're chilling. It just had to be enough for the um. You know the joint to still stand out. I like to refer to it's not a real joint; it's a prop joint. I never saw it. Weak is as illegal. Depending on where you are, you don't know where I am. You are literally making noise in the image, making it feel more filled than it actually is. This bumps up the image in liminality from a two to a four. This next technique, however, this next technique will do a lot more. Change the color. Again, very basic step. Your nephew could think of this, but it gets the job done. Makes it feel otherworldly, like you've changed dimensions, like you're in the upside down. But this really only bumps it up another two points. We're at like a seven now. But this next step is game changing adding a creature in the background <laughs> now, this is guaranteed to force everyone looking at this image to pop a liminal bone no one is safe this change is so drastic it's almost shocking to the naked eye like i McDonald's can't believe it's cream machine actually working like a 30 year old wearing dream merch i would even advise you not to show this to your grandparents or anyone over the age of 60 strokes are very common amongst the elderly with this change you don't expect it it makes you question everything now with these three simple steps i've officially taken this photo from a two out of ten in liminality to a solid hey, music. Eight point five out of ten in liminality. That'd be a killer Instagram post. I suck his dick with a smile hey, that's the song people think I made. You weren't invited to the epic SMP. Don't remind me, man. You fucking prick. You fucking asshole. <laughs> oh, I hope the launch went well, though. Shouts out to all those guys. It is officially day three. Day three is going to be a little different than the last two days. Day three is actually going to be about nine days because I'm going on a road trip. Now, do you remember what I said about road trips? Transitioning between your house to the place you were staying. So everything in between those two places is a transitional space for you, my friend. Still yeah, won't get right. over how much the Sus thing. remix sounds like you did it. See, I, it's, it's, hard, it's easier for me to tell the difference because I, I have like, you know, my own voice. But I, it, I've gotten so many people mistaking that as me that it's like, Kind of, damn, do I sound like that? And I just like haven't noticed? between here and my destination is all a transitional space. This opens so many, so many opportunities for me. Now, I'm going to meet my grandma. Just so happens my grandma lives Man, y'all busted the bot so her. bad the pest command don't even work. Grass. This is good because I live in a desert and deserts are not liminal. All the liminal photos I see have grass and sidewalks and, and in suburban neighborhoods with wooden fences and that's just not, that's just not where I live. That is not Nevada. I didn't know if I was going to do this because it's nine days. It's a nine day road trip. So that's another nine days I'm not posting anything. You guys probably thought I you, but He's I taking have. a road right, trip for this here. video? That's Daddy nuts. Hasn't left remote just yet. I'm really committing to this video. Yeah, stop at no one of them to, to highway gas stations and you'll but have plenty of material. It, I'm getting liminal photos. I will get liminal photos. Let's do this. See, that's just liminal on its own. The Windows XP hills. I'm at the first hotel. All I can say is I'm glad I came here. Just look at this. This oh. is special. Oh, this is special. he found a good Hotels locale. Big in liminality. They might be the biggest category, actually. Now, this staircase is liminal, but look at this. Roof access. Now, this is something you gotta check out. No cameras, no sign. What? I, I, might, I might actually open this door right now. Yeah, it ain't turning. Hell, hell nerd, hell nerd. Damn it. It right, doesn't matter. This place is still super liminal. Oh, that like stairwell shots tight. Is anyone else getting a liminal? I think a lot of right liminal now? photos are probably taken in something like Gmod. Like the environments are made artificially. Now, who would put 
put the ice dispenser in the washer and dryer in the same room. My mom couldn't have picked a better hotel. This I didn't even tell her I was doing a liminal video. I mean, look at this. Oh, he went on with his mom? That's so I gotta sweet. stop before I climax. I gotta stop before I climax. He's so into this. I fuck with that. Thank God. Dude, this gym is straight out of, I don't know, 1990, 2004. Gray, colorless machinery, old, beaten up. Super size me. Nut sweat. On the bench press. Nut sweat. It doesn't get better than this. Oh, the gym shorts and hoodie look. Peak drip. <sighs> And here we are in present day. The results are in. I already posted the photos I saw fit to be liminal onto the liminal space subreddit and uh, they've already done as they have done. So here's what happened. First thing I did was I went through every single one of my photos. Yes, I looked for liminality in the raw photo itself, but I was also looking for ways to tweak the photo to make it more liminal. <laughs> now this process took me a couple hours, but when it was all said and done, I had decided Noble, which thank you for the I raid, man. I hope you had a good stream. We're watching this guy trying to like fit, like take good liminal photos and seeing how like well he can make them do on the liminal space uh, subreddit. Onto the subreddit, and out of a grand total of 397 individual photographs, I found approximately three. I knew it was gonna be three. Three that I found fit to be liminal. I just dedicated three months of my life to do one thing and one thing only: take liminal photos. I went to haunted houses. Thanks for the red no, appreciate it. I went to at least a thousand bathrooms, hotels, parks at night, Dillard's, and out of all Dillard's. of that, three. I heard that name. Three of the photos were good, but not even the raw photo. No, it took hours of that house was really to make good these presentable. Let's start with the. Least I think I think the color filter is probably a bit strong on these. Promising. This one. Now the re oh, mm, this is this is like pretty creepy on its own. But it's not liminal. It's it's just doesn't actually pretty much look straight that more. different from the edited photo. All I did was tweak up the redness, add some grain, and then make the figure, you know, in the middle of the screen a little more. I like the edited version and, and seeable. I and think that I works. I didn't think it was really that liminal. It just kind of creeped me out when I looked back on it. But even before I posted it, I wasn't expecting much from it. Okay. The second most promising was one of the stairwells of a hotel. This that one's I pretty good, but it seems more of like an aesthetic kind of photography thing. Like I could see someone standing in the stairwell and posting it to their IG. Photo, trash, garbage. Nothing What's a liminal there. photo? It's like the, the that picture of the back rooms you see or those weird kind of nostalgic looking places that you can't exactly place but look weirdly familiar but almost creepy. But I knew if I edited the little zero in on that sign and then put a little face in the window. Oh, perfection. Now this one I had high hopes for, okay? This one, this one meets all the requirements. It's a hotel stairwell. It's creepy. And technically it fits into the lore of the back rooms because of the level zero sign, but the crown jewel, my friends. I even knew when I got done editing this photo, it was good. I, I knew this photo was a banger. Infinity Suburb. Th this is his best one. This is easily his best one. Like this one hits. Now you might be like, whoa, Alpha, you did that? But you don't understand the improvement I made to this photo. I mean, I really, it is like- I imagine it was just like the, the one house. house. Bland, sad. You know, even this though, like just the rows of houses, it, you know, the trees in the background kind of cut it off, but all he had to do is extend that and like it kills. Make it Windows XP. I mean, it almost looks black and white when compared to what I did. Just look at the improved one and then look at the real it, one. If I if I were to I mean, it almost looks redo black and white it or if I were to edit it, to what I, did. Just look at I would have made the blues less harsh and tried to make it like a bit more evenly saturated instead of like putting a raw color filter over it. Just personally, I think that would have like made it seem more Windows XP-esque, if you will. I do like what he did with the road making it endless though because it really does look like an edgeless kind of world. Look at the improved one and then look at the real one. For this photo, I bumped up my Photoshop skills from a 5 to a 7. I put my soul in that And again, photo, he's making these and I'm not, so like them. who's really like nearly got the most photos, effort? This is just like my personal thing. That were even slightly liminal. Every other photo was garbage, trash. Especially That's just scary. the bathroom one, which is what I spent the most goddamn time on. So confident was not, is not the word I would use when I posted these photos onto the subreddit. But I took a deep breath, put my feelings aside, and I posted the photo. But wait, what's that? 13, 3, and 5 upvotes in the first hour. Hmm, maybe these photos weren't as bad as I thought, but I'll give it some more time. Two hours. Hmm, the house photo appears to still be gaining, with a now 21 upvote. The rest of the photos, Peace however, are music. falling into obscurity and have failed to really go past... I love your YouTube for several reasons, but most of all because of the unsettling threats you don't subscribe. 
I mean, I've recently transitioned from being like making, you know, pretty uh, threat, like pretty scary threats to not subscribing to, you know, trying to bribe the viewer into clicking the end card. They you gotta, you gotta mix it up. Ago. There's a possibility this might be okay. Fourth hour. What is this? The house photo is <laughs> on the front page of the subreddit? Breaking <laughs> seven with 52 <laughs> Sweet Jesus, this might be going somewhere. Let's just calm down, okay? Hold our horses real quick. We, we don't want to get too excited. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. This could mean nothing. Fifth I, hour! I, I'll say, my like, God, and I got my criticisms of the blue, but, like, he did a really good job on that suburbia one. Like, I don't want to take away from that. Like, he, he killed it. At 100 up votes now, and now it's fifth on the front page. It's That's almost certain to succeed at this point. There's no way anybody can miss it now. There's no way this can get any better. There's no way. What? Alpha Chad 69. Is that 69 promo. <laughs> oh, my prayers have been bad. So yeah, the planets have aligned. There's no See way. Fairy lane. There's no way this gets any better. Oh, 600, 600 up votes. It's at the top of the subreddit. What? what? At this rate, it'll be at a thousand by tomorrow. <laughs> I posted this photo 20 hours ago and it's already on its way to being ingrained in liminal culture forever. My liminal work culture. Is Wait. What? What is this? Removed? <gasps> what do you what do you mean remo removed? What? Alpha Chad 69. Thank you for your submission. Unfortunately, it has been removed for violating the following rule. No. Oh dear. Oh no no no! I no. must have unknowingly broken one of the rules. Oh what was my the gosh! Rule? What have I done? What did I not put the right flair? Did I, did I make another unintentionally homophobic title? Please <laughs> not again. Rule oh, two. Not Let's again. see this. What is this unbreakable rule two that I have unforeseeably broken? No off-topic, or not safe for work content. What? What? Surely there's more. There's ah, here, yes, here we go, here we go. Alright, a liminal space is the time between the what was and the next. It is a place of transition, waiting, and not knowing. Liminal space is where all transformation takes place. If we learn to wait and let it... Uh, what? Huh? So here's what makes no goddamn sense about this. So just by their own definition, L, dude, liminal spaces bozos. need to be transitioning points. But they don't ever define what a transitioning point is. Their most popular post of all portion. time with the most Free my man. is Free a my bingo man. hall. Now you explain to me how a bingo hall is in any way a transitional space. It is physically and metaphorically not a transitional space. It's a bingo hall. That's where people go to life. die. If anything, you'll be playing bingo at the end of your life when you're 90. And if you keep going down, what you'll notice is that all of the popular posts are not, in their definition, liminal. It doesn't meet the requirement. This is a safe bunker for when nukes come. This is a fucking school. This is the guy. Yeah, it's. It, I feel liminal, limin, liminality or liminal spaces, the title as a picture, is less about a hard definition of quote unquote transitional spaces and more like the individual vibe a picture gives you. It's less, it, it's less a definition and more a feeling, if that makes sense. Goddamn old law. Like it should be vague. What are you talking about? Not transitional. Not transitional. That's not transitional. <laughs> He's not transitional. What do you say about him? Okay. What a creature. That's not transitional. That's a meme for God's sake. Okay. So what? What's up? What's up? A girl boss too close to the sun. How many other great liminal photos have been taken down from this stupid subreddit? Okay, first of all, there never has actually ever been an absolute definition. There never has. I watch any liminal space video on on YouTube. Nobody knows what it is because because most of liminal spaces aren't even transitional spaces. That's why I said in the beginning of the video that it doesn't have to be a transitional space. Okay, literally the only actual requirement liminal photos need to follow they need to invoke a sense of nostalgia in you. That's it. That's all, dude. I started this video. With one goal, I wanted to spread my liminal uh, love. Uh, I wanted uh, to make people don't like feel that picture. Did not like that I picture. When I look at these liminal photos, that remind me of better, happier times in my life. And when I finally get the chance to do it, when I finally, after months of work, succeed, the liminal <laughs> gods smite my post down. And how dare they? How dare they pick and choose what is liminal and what's not? How dare they act as the gatekeepers of liminality? I went all over the country, explored the most obscure liminal spaces there were. If anyone, y'all motherfuckers right asked it for the sauce. It's me. So Beat your dick on your own time, not on my Here stream. <laughs> Liminality. This is the time where I beat my dick, all right? This is not your this is not your time for penis beating. This is mine. <laughs> Reminds you how it feels to be a child again. To have no stress, no responsibilities, no worries. The time when just hate you existing. Right you have to prove yourself with degrees, scholarships, medals. None of that matters. You were just happy to be alive. And that's what these photos should remind you of. A time before that all too familiar existential void creeped up into your life. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Oh, this is a cool outro. Is it 40 seconds?
You silly goose. You you only use outros on the last 20 seconds. I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> Somebody really managed to shit on the ceiling. <laughs> on the ceiling to end off the stream all right guys i'm gonna wrap this one up here thank you for coming out to the bonus uh i should be streaming in tomorrow um it's not gonna be dream daddy because i need to record another video but i'll probably finish up dream daddy on wednesday and depending on how the video does i'll probably make that into a video are you fucking kidding me we're getting rated again okay fine i'll go for a little longer god fucking damn it okay we just got rated again so i'm not ending the stream yet i hate you people this is such bullshit. God damn it. God fucking damn it. We just got raided. <laughs> We're getting raided again. I fucking hate my life. I'm going to be trapped in this stream until I die. Oh. All right, fine. I'll find something else to react to. I was literally like mid outro. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. I don't want to waste. I don't want to waste Oompa's raid. Change game tag. Is it not? It's on just chatting. What are you talking about? Yo, I have to stay in here. I'm being actually held hostage. I need more scary shit to react to. I've like literally burned through my list. Walton Files? I, dude, I do not want to react to Walton Files. We, ha we have to make... I, this is probably already on the bingo sheet, but we have to put somebody asks for Walton Files reaction. Baphomet Coon? Fuck is that? Quite an Upa should collab. If we can find something, I wouldn't be opposed. Who rated? Someone was saying like Oompa was rating. Like a bunch of people joined randomly, but like there was no raid notification, so I don't, I'm not sure. Scrimbo catalog? Oh my god. I've already seen those on my own time. He was in the suggested videos. Oh, I got fucking, I got duped. God damn it. You motherfuckers, you tricked me. Okay, the stream's still ending then. Suck my dick. Uh, ad break time. I'm going to fucking bed, dude. I, not Maybe not bed, but I'm... I'm getting my me time today. I've been working all day long. It's been so long today. You don't understand. Streaming is so hard. This is the hardest job on the planet. Soldiers in the military don't know how good they have it. <laughs> oh. We were pulling some numbers this stream, man. Thank you guys for coming out. It means a lot. The Dream Daddy stuff, but also sticking around for the reaction, because like I think that's... React content, I know it's easy, but it's fun. It's just you know, watching videos that I'm interested in with the, with the channel. Oh, yeah, guys, I almost forgot to mention this. I almost forgot to mention this, guys. To, before I go, before I raid Nuka, because we're going to raid Nuka, uh, I almost forgot to mention that uh, if you are in my Discord server, there is now a chat where you can send me videos to react to. Uh, if you, want, if you like, have like a horror series or like a video essay or something you want me to react to, you can put it in that chat on the Discord, exclamation mark Discord to join. Uh, and I'll, I'll be looking through that, putting shit that I think is interesting into my list. And you might, you, maybe whatever you put in there will get added. All right, anyways, I'm gonna raid the homie Nuka. I believe he's playing a uh, horror game. I'm not sure. It's some like indie shit. Thank you for the sub, Etzers. I, want, I expect to see all 500 of you in this bitch. If I if it's even a single one of you aren't here, I'm gonna cry so much. And you wouldn't want to make me sad, would you? You guys wouldn't want me to cry, guys. You wouldn't want to do that to me, guys. I know you don't give a shit. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I can't remember what box. I've seen them in person though. They're fucking clean as hell, dude. They look so damn real. Yo! Holy shit! What the hell? Yo, hold up, yo! Quite with the raid, we're gonna have to play some like Jackbox or some like marbles or something here in a second. How's it going, y'all? Jay in the chat.